Hello, so we're back, and I'm now going to print the doorstop. A little confession, having looked at how long it was going to take before, I've shrunk the file down a little bit so that it takes a little bit less time to print. Um, but that's just me, so here we go. Print. Choose the file. Make sure the feeder is engaged. Uh, if you click engage, it'll take you through all the stages to re-engage the feeder, as I previously showed in uh, the video where I did the initial setup as I've already done this, and I've just done a test extrusion to make sure that I'm not blocked up. Skip this selection right now. Make sure that it's clean, close the cover, check printer. And it's now going through all the checks. Now I'm recording the print as a time-lapse video, so it's not going to be very exciting to watch to begin with because everything's moving slow, but it will mean that an hour and a half can be compressed down into a couple of minutes. Um, let's just do the auto bed leveling. If you're sure you've got a perfectly calibrated bed, you can just click simple. Personally, I like to do the auto bed leveling because although I worked really hard, as you saw, to get the bed nice and level, it doesn't hurt to have it check it before it uses it. It does take longer, but it might well result in a slightly higher quality print than if you didn't do it. And seeing as these prints take hours anyway, uh, I don't see any particular reason why adding a few minutes on should make a big difference. Also for this print, I've switched from ABS to PLA because I got my new PLA order in the post recently. So I've changed a few of the, the settings from the previous video, but it's the same, the same object. So during the auto bed leveling procedure, it does 17 readings. It does one at the very center of the X, Y axis, and then it does a four by four grid across the surface to determine the layout of the bed and automatically adjust the print settings accordingly. Now this will add a few minutes onto your print time, but as it's a two hour print anyway, or possibly 16 hours or even 24, depending on what you're making, a few minutes now might make the difference between it coming free from the bed or not in the future. It's worth checking. Preheat the nozzle. One thing you can do to pre-prepare for this is in the jog menu, you can preheat the nozzle and bed before you go to the object creation that will slightly reduce the time as your nozzle and bed will already be up to temperature. But again, these prints can take hours, so it's not necessarily worth it. Now, obviously I'm not gonna record the entire print because that'd be a very boring video, even if it was sped up. So once it starts the print, I will quickly take you through the manual controls that you have access to during a print. And then I will stop recording the screen and just switch over to the time-lapse video of the print. Okay, we're back. It's uh, leveling itself again quickly using the probe to make sure that it's all lined up. I'm guessing that's just to check against the expansion of the glass. So what's that, prints? You do have access to some manual controls. You could change the temperature. You can adjust the bed height. You can adjust the speed, the fan, the flow rate. It gives you a few options. So if your print isn't quite coming out how you want, but you think you can tell what's going wrong, it does give you the option to adjust it without having to go back through and recalibrate everything. For example, if your lines appear to be a little bit smushed and blurred on one side, it probably means that your bed is a little bit too high. So when you did the nozzle, when you did the nozzle calibration, your piece of paper was either too thin or you were being a bit generous with difficult to move. But that means that you can move the Z axis down slightly and up slightly, depending on what's happening. You can adjust the temperature. So if it's not extruding properly, if it seems to be sort of balling up, you can increase the temperature to the maximum temperature for your particular material. Bear in mind, if you're using PLA and you increase it to the full 230 degrees it can do, you're just going to burn the plastic, clog your nozzle and cause lots of problems in the future. Same goes for the bed. If you set the temperature too high, it's not going to come out the way you want. So I'm just going to let this print now and hopefully we'll come back and it will be a nice clean print in, ooh, how long does it say? A day. No, it probably should be closer to one hour and a half. See you later.
Okay, and now everything resets to make it easy to take out and I'm going to do a nice close-up for you and we'll go over some of the detail and some of the print errors that seem to have cropped up and an explanation for them. So, here we have, hopefully, a fairly nice detailed close-up of the finished product. Um, in my haste to pull it off of the print bed, I bent it ever so slightly at the front there, but that won't affect the overall uh, feel of it. Um, bottom, perfect, absolutely immaculately smooth. The one thing is there's a little bit just here. I don't know if it can be seen. Um, imperfections are bound to happen in 3D printing. It's not that bad. Nothing that would affect your appreciation of a print. Generally speaking, you have a raft layer on the bottom here anyway, so you don't get this glass smooth finish, which is literally glass smooth. It's lovely and shiny. Up here on the top. We can very clearly see the emboss of Nick and Maria do stuff. There are a few, again, little bits but I think that's a combination of the slope is probably on the edge of what is really feasible in general in 3D printing and scaling it down to 75% the original size will have affected this as well so there's a few little bits just just there and, but overall, overall it's very good it's a bit untidy in the hole but again, there are limitations to 3D printing and at least for now, bobbling over the edges on certain inside areas is one of them. But so the first step for this particular example would be to remove the edge. I don't have a craft knife on me, so I'm just going to leave it there for now. But um, yeah, it's lovely and smooth. This is not on the highest resolution that's possible. This is at 100 microns as opposed to 50 microns, which in theory the Fab Totem is capable of. So I'm very happy. Very happy with the print quality. I think that this slope is you know, pushing it, but just the bottom of the K there and the little bit of the O that's really missing, the rest of it is very clear and that could be tidied up with some tools very easily. So there you are, there's a print. It's my new doorstop. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, follow. I'm gonna do a few more prints, chuck the resolution up a bit higher, do some more practical prints for things I actually do need as opposed to things which just are easy to design. And uh, catch you in the future.